cars, weight is the enemy of performance and fun. On a related note, the Fiat 124 Spider weighs about 100 pounds more than the spelt Mazda Miata on which it's based. That sounds like a move in the wrong direction, but what if the fundamental structure on which the Fiat 124 is based is so impossibly fun that a little extra heft doesn't matter? What if the result is similarly thrilling, just a little more dignified? What if? To help answer that question, let's scrutinize Fiat's Roadster. Side by side, it's clear the modern Spider has been sculpted to recall the classic 124 Spider of the 1960s. To really drive home that heritage story, the exterior paint names are outrageously Italian. I like the Bianco Gelato, but I really think if it came down to it, I'd go with the Rosso Passione. Beneath the hood's dual power domes sits a Fiat-built 1.4-liter turbocharged multi-air four-cylinder. Famous for making the Fiat 500 Abarth sound so darn angry, this is the engine's first rear-wheel drive application. In this context, the 1.4-liter gives the Fiat a slight horsepower advantage compared to the Miata, but a major advantage where torque is concerned. Despite that impressive torque figure, when you floor it from a stop, it takes a moment for the engine to really kick in. And once you're up to speed, when you make those tiny little throttle adjustments mid-corner, the reactions are less direct because of the engine's turbocharged nature than if it were, let's say, naturally aspirated. Miata. But with the turbo spinning, full throttle acceleration is pretty good. And when you come to a stop, the engine is kind of a nice little burble thing. Burble, burble, burble. stronger off-the-line punch, stick with the standard six-speed manual transmission included on all trims. Unlike the automatic, the manual lets you slip the clutch, keeping the revs up for a swift launch. Interestingly, the manual gearbox is sourced from the previous generation Miata due to its ability to handle the Spider's hefty torque. Even though it's older tech, the manual still delivers delightfully short shifts and light clutch efforts. If that doesn't sound enticing, A, I'm sorry for you, and B, the $1,350 six-speed automatic features a torque converter that locks in all but first gear for improved throttle response. It'll serve you just fine. Getting back to the issue of weight, the 124 Spider is heavier than its Miata counterpart, but not by that much. It's not like the Fiat 124 Spider is some dumpy ersatz Miata. I mean, like an extra 100 pounds is only a big deal if you're going racing. Are you going racing? Uh, oh, you are? Oh, yeah, 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 no, get me out of them. They're a lot of fun to race. For everyone who isn't going racing, the slightly heavier Fiat is a pleasant space to burn down miles. The Fiat's back interior is outfitted with lots of soft surfaces, agreeable places to put your arms, both here and here, and nice little touches like this bit of stitching on the dash. I don't know what the word in Italian is for class, but whatever it is, it's got it. The Lusso trims piano black accents, leatherette trim, and leather seats, especially the optional saddle seats, peg the spider's classiness quotient. Drop to the entry tier Classica trim, and the cabin is definitely less plush with cloth seats and fewer premium materials, but the general vibe is still welcoming. At a completely average 5'10", the cabin fits me well. Legroom and headroom with the top up are both plentiful. Really, my only complaint is the non-telescoping steering wheel. If this baby came back about one inch, I'd be an even happier camper. If you're big like 6'4", inch production guy James Halfacre, Headroom is still great, but good luck finding somewhere to stow your legs. Dimensional concerns aside, the seats are nicely cushioned for long-haul comfort and commendably supportive for cornering. Where the Fiat's interior really excels is with noise. There's an acoustic windshield, thicker rear glass, and extensive sound insulation throughout, resulting in a cabin that is noticeably quieter than the Miata's. The 124 also has a comparatively smooth ride, making this the smart choice for extended road trips. 
livability box checked, the biggest question is whether Fiat's Roadster is fun to drive. Yes, it is. Steering efforts are light, giving the 124 a relaxed feel. And I mean that in the best way possible. There is a place in this world for easy, lighthearted driving thrills. It's not on the super bumpy road, but it is somewhere, and probably in this car. Canyons and mountain roads are great, but it really takes a closed course environment to truly understand a car's sporting nature. Oh, uh, hey, an autocross. For the autocross portion, Fiat has us driving the Abarth model, which is a little bit sportier with a sportier suspension and uh, four more horsepower, four more horsepower, so a light boost. And then one we're driving in particular has this stuff. So uh, some braces, a bypass air valve that makes it sound cooler but doesn't actually provide any performance, and an exhaust that does the exact same thing. Let's see how it performs on the track. Oh, that sounds good. That sounds nice. The psh. do. Well, that sounds ridiculous. It's both fast and furious. Yes, yes. So it's driftable, which is nice. This thing is surprisingly good on a track. This notion that, oh, it's going to be a, a soft Miata. It's, uh, it's not soft. Uh, while I'm hauling around here, I should point out that I did drive the automatic and uh, it was similarly fun. But there was something really nice about this uh, manual transmission. In fact, it's the same manual that was used in the previous generation Miata and uh, works just great here. Nice short throws. If there was any doubt that the Fiat 124 was going to be fun enough, I think this puts that to rest. No doubt. Fun. Well, that was a good time. Did you have fun? I had fun. Despite being the raciest spider, the Abarth is only four horsepower stronger than lesser trims but it does include a sport suspension, a limited slip differential, a charmingly aggressive exterior, and the option to add Recaro seats, more capable Brembo brakes, and if you've got a spare $1,995, this sweet black hood and trunk treatment. It's also got sport mode, with recalibrated engine, steering, and stability control tuning for elevated levels of sportiness. When not exploring the Spider's sporting potential, EPA estimated fuel economy is decent. Categorize the 124 Spider as a fancied up Miata, and you might expect a premium price. Nope, a manual equipped Spider Classica glides in just under $26,000, including destination, landing only a few hundred dollars higher than the Miata's base price. Meanwhile, the $2,500 pricier Lusso offers leather at a price much lower than the Miata Grand Touring trim, while the track oriented Abarth slightly undercuts the similar Miata Club trim. In some ways, the Fiat 124 Spider stands as the value option. Speaking of options, the Fiat's option list includes handy add-ons like adaptive headlights, rear cross-path detection, blind spot warning, heated seats, a nine-speaker Bose audio system with a subwoofer and speakers in the headrests, and an infotainment system with a seven-inch screen. When considering alternatives, convertible versions of the Mini Cooper or VW Beetle might be worth a look, but the Spider's real competition is the Mazda Miata from which it spawned. So, which is better? I don't know. Quantifying the Spider's merits versus the Miata is a bit like deconstructing a child's choice of balloons. These are roadsters we're talking about. It's perfectly okay to have a preference one way or another based on, uh, what's that thing? Emotions. But if you need a wisp of pragmatism along with your open-air Italian romance, you'll be happy to know the quiet, comfortable, and reasonably priced Fiat 124 Spider has that too.